Hi everybody, my name is Joe Summers and along with my wife Tanya, we own and operate Chalili. I'm going to talk to you today about hybridizing water lilies. When we hybridize water lilies, we need to take a male flower and a female flower, combine them to obtain some seed. Then we have a new hybrid. I'm going to show you the steps on how we would do that. All right, so what we need to do to do our cross pollination is find a water lily that is a first day flower. A water lily generally has a flower that lasts about three days. And on the first day, the flower is actually female. So we can see this particular lily is a first day flower. How can we tell? These anthers have no pollen on them. That's called uh, dehissing when they get pollen. And in the middle is a stomatic cup. The stomatic cup has stomatic fluid in there. Can you see that shaking in there? So what happens is a little uh, bee or a, a pollinator will come along and smell a fragrance and is attracted to that flower. They'll come in, take a drink of that nectar, and sometimes they'll even um, fall in there and drown. What the flower is hoping to do by attracting that pollinator is that bee has pollen on its legs and so we achieve cross-pollination. In our example, what we want to do is find a first day flower and remove those anthers so that there's no, no um, self-pollination before they start shedding pollen. So all we do is get a, get a scalpel or a pair of scissors and cut them off. So we're trying to remove all the male parts of this flower and just leave the female parts. Okay, so we've taken all the pollen out, all the anthers out, and uh, removed them. I'll go ahead and just get them out of the surface just in case they happen to uh, grow pollen in the next few days. They're nowhere near our flower. What we really want to do is predict which flower is going to open ahead of time. So what I would have done uh, this morning before this flower ever opens is cover it with some cheesecloth. And cheesecloth is something that you can obtain from the uh, grocery store. In this particular case, I'm using uh, something called nursery cloth. It's a product that we use in the nurseries all the time. I would have covered this flower before we did any of this removal and um, uh, tied it up either with a rubber band or a string. What that would have prevented was any bumblebees from coming along and having a cross-pollination that I did not plant. So I've uncovered the flower and now I have taken the anthers off. Some people like to remove all the flower petals too, just because it's an easier process, but something in me tells me not to cut the flowers off, so I generally leave the flower petals on. Alright, it looks like we've removed all those male parts of that flower. So now we have to find a flower that is on its second or third day and that has pollen present. All right, so we found another flower that we think would make an interesting cross. This is a uh, purple flower where our other one had a white center with pink tips. So first you gotta choose which lilies you wanna cross. Then you have to find a female flower and a male flower. So um, if you notice, this plant is a either second or third day flower. And we can tell because now our stomatic cup is covered by those anthers. And these anthers have changed the shape of the flower and also they're starting to release pollen. So we're going to do a similar thing where we have uh, just are going to remove some of the pollen and I like to just cut the anthers off and place them right in the stomatic cup of our female flower. So some people will just take a uh, paintbrush and use the paintbrush to gather pollen. Similar to what you just saw a second ago with that bumblebee that came in, gathered some pollen, and moved on to the next flower. So what we're trying to do is control that cross-contamination. So we covered that first day flower with the cheesecloth ahead of time. We would have covered this male flower ahead of time with cheesecloth, and then we would be uh, increase our chances that we're getting no cross-pollination. 
Okay, so we've got our pollen from our male plant, and we're just gonna drop this in our stomatic cup. If we've used a paintbrush in between pollinations, you always wanna sterilize that with some rubbing alcohol. Any of our tools, we've sterilized in between pollinations. And then I like just to add um, Mother Nature's Bees Touch. Pretend like a bee came in here and was, you know, hopping around, really getting, making sure we're getting cross pollination with those pollen gran grains. And now we close this flower back up. Add a piece of cheesecloth. Again, this prevents anyone else from getting in there. And some people use the rubber band. I like to use string myself. Closed up. So in a few days, this flower will sink under the water. If we have not been successful with our pollination, sometimes the flowers are actually sterile. So we could have chosen a male flower that was sterile or a female flower that was sterile, and uh, we would have an unsuccessful pollination. Unsuccessful pollination is a telltale sign by a long straight stem. If you are successful with your pollination, it's very characteristic for the flower to be pulled under the water and there's an S-shaped curve to the flower while it's under the water. In several days, depending on temperature, that flower will um, emerge back to the surface and burst open and then the seeds will float along the surface. But in our case, our cheesecloth will capture all our seeds and we can uh, sow them and germinate them to see if we have anything new and interesting to introduce to the market. When you cross-pollinate a water lily, you really just need to make sure you have a female first day flower, a male second, third day flower. It does not matter if the flower is from an annual plant or a perennial. That used to be unheard of, but that's very common now that we can do those crosses. Um, if you wanna be uh, cutting edge, you can introduce one that's been crossed from a day bloomer to a night bloomer, or some of the other species that have yet to be crossed. I do thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about water lily hybridization. Check us out on chalili.com, Facebook, or Instagram. Mm -hmm.